Welcome to the world of organic chemistry. That's what we're going to be talking about today. You probably use the word organic, but not. You probably didn't know what that word means. So the word has just been begging you to listen to today's lesson. So what does organic mean? Well, according to Webster or Google, whoever you want to give the credit to, organic relates to or derived from living matter. In chemistry, we say denoting compounds containing carbon. So we're going to look at things containing carbon. They are all chiefly from the biological origin. They are produced from living things. In food or farming, you probably hear this word used a lot to describe organic foods. It's produced involving production without the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or artificial agents. You don't want any artificial things or pesticides in your food. That's why organic food costs more. And if you've been paying for organic food, you probably want to know what you've been paying for because it's more expensive. Yesterday I went to the grocery store and I was shopping for apples and then there was an apple that was organic and it was costed more than the one that wasn't organic. Good thing I knew what organic meant. Otherwise, I wouldn't understand why they're charging me extra. But don't worry, after this lesson, you'll understand what organic means a little more deeply. I want to first start you off with a group of organic compounds called hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the best place to start when you're starting off with organic chemistry because they are molecules that contain carbon and hydrogen. So that's why we call them hydrocarbons. And of course they're org organic because they contain carbon. There are three types of hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Let's start off with alkanes. And I'm going to give you the simplest type of alkane which has, contains only one carbon. And all of the carbons always have four bonds. We're going to surround this with the simplest of atoms, which is the smallest, hydrogen. So carbon with uh, bonds of hydrogen with them, this is called methane. Excuse me for being obscene, but methane is the type of gas that comes out of farts. So if you have smelly farts, you probably have a lot of methane, and this is a flammable gas. All right, well, if methane is too easy for you, let's do something with maybe two carbons bonded to one another. And so we're going to add as many hydrogens as needed to make each carbon have a four bonds because in nature, carbon always has four bonds. This here is called ethane. And if you're catching my drift and you're following me so far, I'm probably going to go to the next most complicated thing with three carbons. And we'll surround that with as many hydrogens as needed to make each carbon have a four bonds. We call this propane. Now notice that they all have the same suffix. A and E. Why? Because they are all part of the same group of hydrocarbons called alkanes, having also the same suffix. Something unique about this group, well, before I tell you that, let's write the formulas for each of these. Formulas for methane is uh, carbon. We have one carbon followed by four hydrogens. So we'll write a CH4. Uh, ethane has two carbons, so we'll make a subscript two for the carbon and hydrogen. Let's count how many there are. There are six. And propane, there'd be C3H. How many carbons are there? Well, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, something unique about this is all alkanes follow the general formula where there are carbons and N will represent the number of carbons that there are. Uh, there are also hydrogens, and for for every for the amount of hydrogens there are, there are two times the amount of carbons plus two. So, for example, if 
we have uh, propane. Propane has three carbons. Okay, so if N equals three, then uh, the amount of hydrogens is going to be two times three, or two times N, which is six, plus two, which is eight. So C3H8. So without drawing, you probably can determine the next molecule. If it had uh, four carbons, how many hydrogens would it be able to have? You probably can predict this without drawing it. Well, it's H. Uh, well, four times two is eight plus two is ten. And this is the formula for butane. Boom, again, butane has the same suffix because it's part of the ane or the alkane groups. And that's the, my lame drawing of butane. So all of these have the same suffix, so you don't have to suffer. They all end in A and E because they're all parts of alkanes. Now, where do we get the prefix from? Well, you just follow a simple chart. Ta-da, this is the chart. So we've already talked about the... Uh, Methane, ethane, propane, and butane, and the rest of them are the same as you would use in a geometry class. For example, pentane is a shape with uh, five sides, five-sided figure, pentagon. Uh, hexane, heptane, octane, same as octopus, having eight legs, lonane, and a decane. So as long as you memorize the prefixes, you can uh, match them up with the suffixes, and it will be easy for you. Well, what about alkenes and alkynes? They have different uh, suffixes, and we're going to go over those. So let's talk about the difference between all of them. The alkenes have car all of the carbons having a single bond. Alkenes have at least one of the carbons will have a double bond, and alkynes, at least one of the carbons, will have a triple bond. And just to get nitty gritty, if something has a triple bond and a single bond, we go to the one with the most and we'll still call it an alkyne. Or if something has a double bonds and single bonds, we'll call it an alkene. For alkenes and alkynes, the general formula will be for alkenes first is a CN and H2N. And for alkynes, the general formula will be CN H. 2n minus 2. Let's see how that works and do a few examples. So for one of our examples, we'll start with the um, hydrocarbon, uh, the alkane, and then we'll try to turn that into an alkene. So uh, we'll do propane here on the right, and we're going to change that into an alkene. At least one of the carbons have to have a double bond. So We'll have uh, three carbons again, and at least one of them has a double bond. Doesn't matter which one, that carbon will have a double bond. Then I can go ahead and add all of the hydrogens in order for each carbon to have a uh, to have four bonds. And boom, I'm done. So that's propene, again having the ene suffix because it's an alkene. And then let's try to look at the formula. Now when I did the formula, it has three carbons. And for hydrogens, we can count three, four, five, six. Hydrogens is uh, six hydrogens. Now when I did a double bond to the carbon, that made less rooms for the surrounding hydrogens to be on there because each carbon needs its four bonds. So there's uh, three hydrogens three carbons and six hydrogens, and it follows our formula. Uh, Cn and H2 times N. So three times two is six, and it follows this alkene formula. So with the same formula, you can probably continue on and go on to butene. If there are four carbons, then there's going to be four times two hydrogens. Ta -da! And again, my lame drawing of butene, doesn't matter where the double bond was, I just chose it to be on those other two carbons, but no matter where they are, they are still called butene.
And this lecture wouldn't be complete unless I also talked about the alkynes. So here goes. Propyne would have three carbons again, but uh, for hydrogens it would have two times three minus two, which is six minus two, which is four. And for butene we would still have four carbons, but the hydrogens would be four times two minus two, which is six. And we are always using the same formulas that were given from the general formula that was right over here for the alkynes. Three carbons will give you H the for the hydrogens, uh, 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 2 is 4. And then f if there were 4 carbons, uh, 2 times 4 minus 2 is 6. So for our big question for today, let's see if you understand how to do this. And I'm going to tell you, give you a molecule, you tell me the formula. Hexene. Pause the video right now and see if you can give me the formula for hexene. Okay, so if you got it, you found that hex means that there are six carbons, so C6 and C6 part of the ene group is the number of hydrogens is going to be two times that of the carbon, so it's C6H12. Congratulations. For extra credit, that's a drawing. But it doesn't matter where you put the double bond, I just decided to put it there, but it's still hexene. Well, for now it doesn't matter. When we get deeper into the subject, it will. I want to end with giving you another application for organic chemistry here. And this is probably a word that you've seen before. It's octane. High octane gas has octane in it. It's to help you power your car. And it has a lot of carbons in it. Eight carbons to be exact. These carbons have a lot of energy in them and when you break these bonds from these carbons to form carbon dioxide which is the product of gasoline coming out of your exhaust all of the time then you used up that energy to help power your car and that's where you get octane. Probably nonane and decane would have even more energy but it's not as practical or prevalent. So congratulations on all the things that you learned in organic chemistry. We looked at all of this stuff. Wow, look at all this. We looked at uh, the definition of organic chemistry and how it relates to the organic foods. We looked at three different types of hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons are things containing carbon and hydrogen, alkene, alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. We looked at uh, what makes them in their uh, special group and we looked at the prefixes and how the prefixes determine how many carbons there are. Then we did an example problem that many of you aced, so congratulations. I'll end it with this joke saying that today you probably learned all kinds of things about organic chemistry. Haha. <laughs> Good luck studying.